Thank you, Father, for the words that come with the songs and the titles that make up a message of their own. You say, rise up, raise a hallelujah. It's a good feeling, and I'm a soul on fire. You know, there are really different dynamics of music, but they still make such a good message, and it always falls in with the message of the day. <sighs> Father, we thank you for today's word. We thank you for all that you give us and do for us and always leading us in the right direction. We ask that today's word gets deep into our hearts and our beings for you to get the message that you need each one of us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, this is our second bulletin. Really excited about it. I've updated it. Now, we always ask about prayers. For other people. If you can contact me prior to, well, by the end of Wednesday, then we can get it on here for others to take home or at the time to pray for those that you need prayer for. We can have it on the bulletin as well as say it at church for you. So if you need those, please send them in. You know, email, phone call, text, mail, however you want to get it in and you want somebody to pray, be prayed for, if we have it in print, it can't be missed. It cannot be forgotten. We also now have the song titles on here. So since you're watching online, you cannot be part of the worship time because we don't have the rights. But this is the same message that you see on the screen, and those are in here to take with you as you need it as well. And of course we have the verses. Now in the back, I've updated as well. That picture is going to be changed too. I'm so excited because now we have the cool thing. We're going to call it a steeple. Because <laughs> whatever term it is, I can't say. But it's right up here. Same color as a church and it has a cross on it. And it's gorgeous. So that will be updated. But then it also has on here our Sunday service time, Bible studies, uh, movie dates, clothes, notes that we have and we're also going to start collecting non-perishables. We do have a few of those. So if you know somebody that's in need of clothing and food, if we have it available that they can have, no questions asked, it's theirs for having. We have had the opportunity to give away some clothes which just made me really happy to put it subtly. <laughs> I was just about jumping around and making a fool of myself, which I do well. You know, but when you're happy and full of the joy of the Lord, it's it's a different thing altogether. Let it out, let people know it. And that is where you see people shining God. So Lord, we thank you. And if you want to join us, we're at 227 West Main, West Fargo. And if you can't, um, you can mail us a tithing as well, and you can always find us online. So, Father, we thank you for what you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the tithing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for satisfying our every desire and need. Your word says we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give you, give for the growth of your kingdom. That's very important. It's not for us. It's not for our church. It is for God's kingdom. And God's kingdom spreads all over for everyone. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so we, being rooted and grounded in love, and have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Fill us with all the fullness of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And with that, it's Luke 11, 42. Woe to you Pharisees, because you give a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Basically, God has to be first. God is always first in everything. Then you do as he asks. You have the tithing and help others and things 
but always remember that it's for God. It's not a duty that you feel you're compelled to do. And today, it's the message from God is today's message. Now, before I start reading this, we all, at one time or another, hear from God. He gives us messages. And you know when you're hearing from God, especially if it's something you don't want to hear. Then it's a little bit louder, and God is a little more persistent. It's kind of like having somebody going like this to your head. Do you get my message? Do you hear me now? Are you going to listen to me now? He's very persistent. So it's best to follow what he's doing and saying. And then you can get rid of that continuous thing in your head. Acts 10, 30-36. Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers and remembered your gifts to the poor. So, it's very simple, right there. God hears you. He only remembers the good things you do, the gifts you do for someone else, as long as you are saved, with Jesus as your Savior. He remembers all that. And you have said, forgive me of my sins, those are gone, and all that's left is what he remembers as good, and what you've done. And he hears your prayers. Sent to Job for Simon, who was called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon, the tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately. In other words, God told me to do this, and I did it now. You've heard about jumping in head first, feet first, not just walking in, you plunge. That's how it is to be. And it was good, for you, uh, good of you to come. Now we are all in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. In other words, you got the message and we want to know it. Then Peter began to speak. Now I realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. He doesn't. Everybody is equally loved, cherished, and a possession of God's love. But accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does it, does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel? That was pretty important. Announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen. Those that don't listen, they miss so much. Or, you know, there are around a bunch of people that are naysayers. And, well, if I speak up, you know, I might get in trouble or somebody might get mad at me or whatever excuse that you have. Well, don't. If God is talking to you and you are so uncomfortable around all these other people because you know it's wrong to be there, get out. God will help you through it. He'll take you every step of the way. You know, he gives us angels to give us messages. And sometimes those angels look like people. God will find you. He has more ways of getting to us than we have a, even been imagined. I mean, have you like looked at something and thought, wow, I get it now. It had nothing to do with looking at the Bible. God will find it. He will give it to you. He remembers all the things that are good, and you are good with God when you're following him. He loves to have us follow him and be in need. He sends those he chose to tell us these things. How many people have missed the opportunity to get to tell people about God? The one that's standing in the middle of the crowd that cowers down because they won't let go of Satan. That is so sad, so heartbreaking because they have missed so much of their life. And every one of us are called to do this. Not just necessarily stand here because there are people that just walk around and talk to people, and they are more effective than many pastors because they reach out, literally. They make that effort for somebody to see this is true. 
I have a message for God from you, or from God for you. First they're like, uh, but then they listen. When you hear that message, you know it's from God. There's just no mistaking it. If it makes you uncomfortable, it's probably a good reason that it's from God, because he's telling you something. But we have to keep him first. Keep that door open. Let him know that you're waiting. And he's always looking for someone. So be ready. He scans the globe constantly, looking for somebody. I didn't know I was being looked for, but he found me. Somewhere in me, I was lighting up, saying, here I am. And he found me. And I'm so glad. And me, you know, um, I'm a very subtle, passive type of person. <laughs> Not even close. When God told me to do a few things, I tell you what, I couldn't jump fast enough. And then I couldn't talk fast enough. But it's worth it when you listen to him and do what he says. It gives you, like the song, I just got to tell somebody, good feeling, because that's what it is. That's what it feels like, and that's what you're supposed to do. Not everybody's going to listen, so don't take offense to it. Some are going to get really belligerent. Okay, walk away. It's not your place to have that one. There's somebody else for that one. But keep going. Don't give up. In Acts 10, 30 through 36. Say, do it again. 10, or 17, 10 through 12. <laughs> I'm glad I have a big screen to show me which one I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I get so caught up in where I'm at, which is wonderful for me in the feeling department. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were more noble characters than those in Thessalonians. Thessalonica. I can say that and I'm not up here. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if it was what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did a number of prominent Greek men and women. Now, it's pretty amazing because God has a design for all nations not just a couple people in this specific group. Everybody is, you know. This is an example of being really hungry for the word. I mean, they had the details every day. And it made them believe. You know, just give it a chance, work with it. They received the message with eagerness, you know. When a baby is hungry and they're reaching for their bottle because they're hungry, that's how it is. Eager, reach, 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 ask for it, give me more, God, give me more. They were hungry and there's, it proves it. I mean, how hungry they were because it's in the Bible. Those little ahas didn't make it. Every verse has a purpose. But the prominent Greek men and women, it reached them. Now, so often, you know, prominent people are above God. They don't have to do that because, well, I got this, I got this, I got this. You got nothing. Because none of that you can take with you. But when you go and you have Jesus, you've got everything. You know, this is an example to follow. Received it with great eagerness. And it was true. It was wonderful. It's the filling that you need. That's the example that we should follow. Not, well, I'll look at it later. And then a couple years later, it's got two inches of dust on it. What was I going to look up in there now? Too late. Romans 10, 14 through 17. How, then? can they call on the one they have believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is 
written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Well, it doesn't say beautiful feet, but I got those feet and I like to share the good news. But it, not all Israelites accept the good news. So sad. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Well, how can they believe in someone? You know, if I can't see it, how can I believe in it? If I can't touch it, how can I really know it's true? Who's going to tell me this? How do they know what to tell me? Where did, it's a snowball effect of questions. But God sends them to you, and you just have to believe that it's right, it's true, it's God's word. You feel it. When you're going somewhere, you can feel the difference. It's either a dead situation or it's an alive situation. Not everybody belongs in the same place. God has us in different churches, different places, different countries, different mannerisms of doing things. But when you feel it, you, you just start to feel it grow. And you get hungry and eager and you want it. And then those questions start to get answered. God sent somebody to you to tell you, to teach you, to help you, for you to turn around and do the same thing. You don't have to be standing up here. I'm one person telling you guys, and you tell the rest, and the rest, and everybody gets to see it. And it's around the world, people can see this. Those that are missing, you know, if somebody clicks on something, and they ended up with something else, I've heard these stories with Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer, and other pastors have had these things when people are clicking through their TVs. Something happens and it can't click off. Can't turn it off, can't turn it down. You can only turn it up. That's a message. If that happens when you're watching something, there's a purpose for it. They've even tried turning them off, and the remote won't work. And some of these cases, they're not able to get up and turn it off, so they are stuck listening to it for a reason. God's gonna pin you in that chair and make you hear what he's got to say. Amen. So. Your faith is an important thing because that's when it starts building. You know, always keep your faith. Yes. You want to hear it. You want to know it. You want to get tired of questioning it, don't you? I mean, oh, I hear this, and I hear that. Well, quit hearing the, the wrong thing. Pick up your Bible. Start to read it. Go to somebody you know is going to be honest with it, help you the best they can, or send you where the best place for you to be is. Things get so much better, and you won't be able to contain it. You'll be shouting it from the rooftops. However, I don't want to get on the roof. It's a, it's a metaphor. <laughs> that doesn't mean I wouldn't. If God told me to do it, I'd be right up there. Because that's what he wants. And he, I've always been told all my life, Carly, get a big mouth. <laughs> I used to kind of get mad, but now it's like, thank you. I have a big mouth. I have a voice that carries really well. We don't need a microphone in here either. And there's places bigger than this. When I was a bar, working in the bars, I could place my orders over the band because my voice carries so well. I have a big mouth. Now I know why. I'm going to shout it to the world. I've got a gift of a big mouth, but it's got a good purpose. Amen. When I finally found out what it was, and I'm loving it. <laughs> First Corinthians 1, 18 through 19. For the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing. You know, I read that like four times and it just broke my heart. It's so sad to even think that that's, you know, what it is. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intellect I will frustrate. Well, you know what? It's one of those real simple situations. You have Jesus, you have a great life. 
you don't have Jesus, you're actually thinking the cross is foolish. Well, you're looking at the fire pit, that's foolish. Mm -hmm. It's and God has this way, okay, you're going to think that your wisdom is more important than I am or my son. Or because you're so intelligent, you have this idea that you have it all covered. Well, you are intelligent and wise because God gave you that gift. And if you don't use that gift the right way, and have his son there in you to show you, because he wants you to show people his way, you're going to lose all that. Have you ever heard of these people that have been so intelligent, you know, beyond genius level, they actually end up going crazy? Because they knew more than God? They thought they knew everything? One thing they never really understood, though, was the Bible. How, are, how smart are you then? You can have an average IQ, know the Bible, and still be more intelligent and more wise than anybody with an IQ or whatever the maximum is. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. But if you put them together, you are unstoppable to do something for God. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 20. So from now on, we regard no one from the worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Jesus in this way, we do so no longer. Because that's what we thought. Jesus was just a human. He was a prophet. And then that was one way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Do you understand what that means? Now that you have Jesus in you as your Savior, as it says, the old has gone, the new is here, and that's a hallelujah because you are saved and now your life is improving and it's going to be changing. That's the message from God. Hallelujah, because now you have my son that I gave for you in you. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ who gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the gift of Jesus. He sacrificed as much as Jesus did because he gave up his son. He's a father, and it hurts a father to lose a child, to use them as a sacrifice. The only time that's ever been done through God is when he did it. Not these other cult situations where they find that that's what they're supposed to do, because that's not. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Now that you have Jesus in you and you ask for forgiveness, the sins are gone. Quit dwelling on them. Live. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He tells us things in messages, different ways, in different messages. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. I'm an ambassador. Every one of us are, because we share the word. We take charge of it, and we go forward with it. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Once you're saved, you're an ambassador. It's, it's a simple concept. And yet people always want to overthink it, over -complic. They just make it so difficult. It's simple. You are a child of God. When you have Jesus as your Savior, use it. You are the ambassador to share the word, to guide the children, to help them. You don't necessarily have to preach to them, but you see them somewhere. Help them. Jesus stopped to help people in the midst of his way to save a child. A woman grabbed his cloak. He stopped to find out what's going on. He would not let any child be left behind. If somebody needed something, he did it. If somebody else needed something else, he got it done. That's his example. I love all of us, he says, and he helps all of us. They had him there physically, so he couldn't be everywhere, but now he can. And inside of you, he can be everywhere. 
2 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 5. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for what that message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it is with you. As I just said, every one of us are ambassadors. We all get to go and talk and teach and help and learn in the process. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked people and evil, for not everyone has faith. So what we're wanting to do is save the wicked, evil people, bring them back. God is saying, I gave you this gift, give it to them, share it. It's like you get so full of the Holy Spirit and all the praises and then you feel like, you're not feeling it anymore. You're not hearing anything. Well, you're not getting it out. It's the picture. You have to dump it out and fill it up again. Dump it out. Give it away. It was given to you. If you want to feel that recharge, that something inside that you just can't control and you don't understand it, well, get it out. And it fills back up. The Holy Spirit is just having fun helping you help others, and then you want to get up on the rooftop and shout it out because you can't contain it. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Only can he do this if you have Jesus in you. People are after you, they're chasing you down, they're letting you know God is trying to get through. Where do you want to be? This lonely, fake, happy life? that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, and you're hollow inside, or follow a more narrow path and be much happier, much healthier, much more loved and loving. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. You can't help it when you follow God that you cannot do anymore. He's doing it to help you help others. Your rewards, when you do something for God, they just grow. You don't do it for rewards. That is a reward. But he does. He's got all the good things you've done. May the Lord direct your heart into God's love and Christ's preser perseverance. Perseverance. Yeah, that word. Doing well. <laughs> It's simple. People want to tear it apart. You know, instead of taking the verses around the one thing, you know, they want to point out the one thing and tear it apart. It doesn't work that way. You have to understand the rest of it. And that's where too many people get misled. Well, look what he did here. No, no, no. Read the rest of it. Don't let them read it for you. You go find it. You read it. Understand it. If you can't understand it, find someone that you know will honestly help you find the right answers, the right reasons, not, and he killed them all. No. <laughs> That's not the purpose of that sentence. Titus 1, 9. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught. So he can be encouraged, or so he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refuse, refute those who, <coughs> excuse me, oppose it. That's just what I said. Trust the message, study the message, the sound doctrine. It's teaching from the Bible, understanding God. Not whatever angle. You know, if you're doing it just to try and pick it apart. Well, I challenge you to keep reading and finding the answers to picking it apart and see where you end up. You're not going to get those answers. You're going to find it's not right. But this sound doctrine that God gave us in his word is to protect us from the false teachers, the false prophets, those self-proclaimed, because that's not how it is. They're very close. They're very shrewd. They get you... All the way, but yet you still have that. I'm not sure. Well, then search it. Find somebody. And you'll find out that one little thing that was turned. Hebrews 
4, 1 through 3. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, and the good news is so wonderful. Just as they did, but the message they heard was one of no value to them. Hmm. Because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. In other words, you don't have Jesus. You're not believing. You're not agreeing. You're not listening. The devil's got a hold on you, and he doesn't want to let you go. But it's your free will to be let go. He does not have control over you. When you have Jesus, he has no power on you. So give him up, take in Jesus, and then you have the power. I am in charge of sending you away because Jesus gave me that power. And I'll walk on your head. And by the way, I'll dance on his head because I've done it. Now we who have believed enter the rest just as God said. How did you enter the rest? Not by laying down and covering up with a pillow and a blanket. It's by having Jesus in your heart as your Savior. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. If you're not saved, you're not getting in. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. You don't do what I tell you. Take my son that I gave you. You don't get anything. First Peter. Two, eight and nine. A stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobeyed the message. Hmm. You got that test wrong because you disobeyed the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood of a holy nation. By the way, that's us. You don't have to have these types titles and labels because that's what you are. God's special uh, possession. I like being God's special possession. The only time being a possession is good. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. So this wonderful light. You know, there was a time I wouldn't have understood what they meant. But you know that little like example, if you're sitting in a dark room and there's just one little light somewhere in the distance of this room, that's the one thing you're looking at. It makes you feel safe. Just that little bit of light. For kids, night lights in the hallways, their bedrooms, the bathrooms. For adults, how many adults have night lights and don't admit it because they don't want to feel like, you know, they're kids. Well, you know what? That's why God had people invent a nightlight. Furthermore, you don't stumble and step on things. We have cats and dogs, and there's no light, and they're laying on the floor. <laughs> they're getting hurt, and we're going down. So, but if you are in this lonely place, and you're just terrified and scared and lost, and you don't know what, that's when it's Jesus... Be my savior, and then you've got that light. You can feel it. It might get dim sometimes because you know you're trying, you're turning it down yourself. But he's there, and he gets brighter. It is. You, you just can't help but smile when you know that the light that you have is Jesus. Don't disobey him. It's not worth it. Second Peter. 19 through 21. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do you will do well to pay attention to it, as it is a shining, a light shining in the dark place. There's the Lord working through that light again, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand, this is really important because there are so many false people out there that no prophecy of Scripture came out by the, prof came out by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Very simply stated, he didn't do it himself. 
She didn't do it himself. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will. That is a work through God. But prophets, though human, spoke from God. Three little words. Spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Okay. I have had the most wildest experience when I actually had a prophecy with a friend of mine. And I can't, I can't explain it in words. There's something about it that just is not you. And I was trying to pray, and my, it's like my tongue got three times too thick because it wasn't working. I couldn't say anything until I paid attention to what I was supposed to say, and the words just came out. The difference of, oh, I'm prophesying, whatever. The Lord may tell us things that need to be fixed, but he doesn't give us bad prophecies either. God is good. He is love. And if it has to be something corrected, he is letting you know through a prophecy. It's like if you get it put it on your heart that you have to pray for someone, it sounds like it might be a bad thing because you just got this thing. We have to stop and pray for this person. In the middle of a sermon, that has happened for people. As it turned out, if they wouldn't have stopped and prayed for that person, that person would have died. However, everybody praying, because God said, you do this. It was a test, basically. You follow through with what God does, and he follows through on his end. So always remember, the truth is not, oh, your clothes are going to rip. You know, something goofy. That is not a true prophet. People can't make a prophecy happen. It comes through the Holy Spirit from God directly. Nobody else gets in on that line. Father, we thank you for today's message. We pray that it takes care of questions and answers to people and helps them to at least know where to find the word or to help someone else understand. Take us through our daily events, keeping us close to your heart as you always do, and helping us through all our daily adventures. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now we will have communion. deny yourself to have communion because you're watching this on your computer, your TV, or your phone. If you have the opportunity to do communion, I suggest and recommend that you follow what Jesus and the Lord want you to do. <clears throat> For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In Jesus' name.
as I mentioned before, we have prayer requests available. You can email the church, churchofgodward at outlook.com. You can call the church, 701-639-6240. The phone is, and email is more for just prayers, questions, requests, things that you may want me. Otherwise, reach out to a friend, someone you know you can trust. It's important if you feel that you need a prayer taken care of to follow through with it. If you need help with a prayer, if struggling, then ask for help. Find it in the Bible. Find someone. I'm here. I am here. The church is generally from Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 2. I'm always willing to help with whatever I can. And for those that are now deciding change ways and have Jesus as your savior after hearing the good and the bad. It's the bad as if you don't. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. And now with that, your life has changed. And it only gets better. Thank you, Father, and with that we have the last song.